Using TypeScript is one thing, but using TypeScript the right way with best practices is different. In this video, I want to go over all of these best practices that you might want to know in order to write the cleanest TypeScript code. And of course, you might get asked these kind of questions on your interviews whenever you're applying for web developer positions. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so just a very quick disclaimer, all the things that you're going to be seeing now is not something that you would find on websites on TypeScript best practices, for example, on Dev.2, but rather things from my own experience where I think that many people or many developers kind of know about but somehow neglect and this leads to poor quality, so to say. So let's dive into it. First of all, you probably know that there's a type called any and unknown, which is kind of an anti pattern. So you shouldn't really be be using it. But what is unknown, right? It functions similarly to any and probably it's kind of better. But still, what's the difference, right? If somebody asks you on the interview, you have to explain this. But how would you explain it? Well, on this Stack Overflow page, we have a very good description of it. So unknown is kind of a type safe counterpart. So it's already better than using any, right? Anything is assignable to unknown, but unknown isn't assignable to anything but itself. So meaning that let's say we have a variable, which is unknown, and it's 10. And we can cannot assign this variable to a string, right? Because it's unknown. So it cannot be assigned to anything else. So it's already good, because you're going to get this error. Meanwhile, a variable which is any can be assigned to anything with to a string, literally, TypeScript does not care about your variable now. So another thing here, when it comes to methods, let me demonstrate it to you. So we have two variables, right? So I'm going to take the first one, which is any example, and I'm going to call some, let's say, uh, a method called load. And as you can see, we don't get any errors. And you can, of course, run into bugs by just calling this method, because what if this method doesn't exist during the runtime? Meanwhile, if you use the unknown example, so let's use this one, and I called the method load, like this, you're going to see that the compiler already complains that the load doesn't exist on type unknown, which is already good. So if you can choose between those, choose unknown. All right, the next example we have is called access modifiers. And you probably know that TypeScript already has built in access modifiers like protected, private and public. And what I'm trying to say here is that many developers don't really take advantage of this feature. So you can have a name which is protected means it's only going to be uh, protected members are only visible to subclasses. So if you inherit from this employee class, this new class is going to be able to use this name private. On the other hand, let's come here. No, this is public. Where's the private one? Maybe above here. So the private one is like protected, but it doesn't allow access to the member even from subclasses. So this variable is literally only accessible from within the class. And we also have public. But again, like many developers don't really use this feature. And even if you're using React and Angular, I would really encourage you. And for example, why you would want to use this and why this is considered the best practice. For example, for some reason, you have a Josh who is also an employee, and you really want to get the salary of Josh for some reason, let's say Josh dot salary, and you're going to get an error because salary is private and only accessible within class employee. Now what an unexperienced developer would do is actually convert this private variable to a public one or pub property, not a variable. And now you would actually not get an er any errors, but you already break the idea of this class employee and the, the idea that the salary should be private, right? So what you would usually do is actually revert this and have a public method, public getter, so to say. So I would, would say get salary like this, and we would simply return this dot salary like this. And now instead of directly calling a private property, we would instead call a public property, which is called get salary and like this for some reason in case we need Josh's salary. Before we continue, just a quick note, guys, turns out that most of you are not even subscribed to my channel. Well, why? The videos are only getting better and are going to keep getting more interesting from now on. 
So make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you're always notified whenever a new one is out. And now let's continue. Another thing that I wanted to show you is that many people actually make a mistake when using types. So this is the wrong way of using types. So let's say we have a reverse function and we have a string and we annotate it as string, but it's a, it's a capital K string. So in the same in the return value, this is wrong. What we have to do is actually use a lowercase type. Well, you might ask, what's the difference? Because if you use this, your program still works, right? But not really, it's a false positive. So looking at this Stack Overflow page, you can see that the, the Boolean data type, so, or a string, which is like lowercase, this can also be like Boolean lowercase and Boolean just to make it matching, just to make it match the, the Stack Overflow page like this. So the Boolean data type is a value that can only be true or false, obviously. This can only be true or false. But this is an, an anti-pattern, which is actually a false positive as, and, and is going to lead to bugs. So the Boolean uppercase or capital case object is an object that represents a Boolean value. So what this is, is basically the following. So you can use it like this and let's say you can use zero, then it's gonna be false or you can use, I don't know, 100, which is gonna be true because it's higher than zero. So basically these types are wrong and always make sure that you're using lowercase types. These ones are correct. Okay, the next one is pretty interesting actually. It's called ordering overloads. So what is actually an overload? Well, in other programming languages, like for example, in Java, you can overload functions, meaning you can have a function with exactly the same name, but it can accept different um, properties, right? Uh, sorry, different arguments. So you can have X and Y, and you can have, and can have another function with exactly the same name. In our case, it's called just then, and it can have different arguments. And then when calling this function, IDE is automatically going to suggest to you, hey, you have two different functions with different properties. Which one do you exactly do you want to use? But in JavaScript, we actually don't have this feature. But on the other case, on the other hand, TypeScript does have this feature. You can use this feature by using this keyword declare. But the thing is, you don't really need to overload your functions when in the JavaScript world or rather in TypeScript world. You would usually use this if you're kind of a library developer. If you're developing, developing a custom library and you want to expose different functions with different properties, then you would probably um, use this feature. But anyway, let's look at the wrong way of overloading your uh, functions. And in this case, it's specifically about ordering them. So we have a function with an X, which, is, which can be unknown. We have another function, which is HTML element, and it returns a number. And we have another one which returns a string. Now, if we uh, use my element variable, which is an HTML div element, which is which should be using this function, and whenever we use this variable here, it's gonna throw an error because, well, even if it's an HTML div element, it's gonna go from up to bottom. And the problem here is that the upper one is the more general one. So unknown, any, these are very general types. So the program is going to be confused. The right way is actually come from a more specific down to a more general. So HTML div element, which is a string, okay, another specific one, and this one is very general. So if you put this one here, and which is an HTML div element, this is not going to complain, all right? Okay, let's look at the following example. Here we have an interface, and many people use the interfaces wrong when they have multiple parameters. So what, let's say we have a function, which returns a number. We have another function called, again, UTC offset, which takes a B argument as a number and returns moment. And another one is very similar, but this one uh, here, the argument B is actually a string. So what is wrong here? Well, you literally overloaded your interface. I'm not sure if you can call this, but you literally declared another function, which is very similar. And the only thing is the, the only thing different is that type of the argument. So what you can do instead is actually leave this one empty and have another one, which is B, but you can use a union type for your argument, arguments type, right? Very easy. So make sure that you're always thinking about unions when you have repeating code, because dry, don't repeat yourself. 
okay, another similar one, which is optional parameters. Here we have a diff function and the first one accepts just one parameter, another one accepts two, and the third one accepts three. But this is again code duplication. So in order not to duplicate your code, you can just use optional parameters like here. So two is optional and three is also optional because we're using a question mark, which in fact in JavaScript, in the newer versions of JavaScript, ES6, means that it's an optional variable. So always make sure that you're keeping your code dry and not duplicate things. All right, the next one is one of my favorites actually. And if you're a clean code, code lover, then you're gonna like this one too. So imagine you have a user object, which has three properties, name, age, and password. And notice that password is actually optional. So there can be a case where it doesn't exist. So let's remove it actually, and say that the password is not there. And then let's say we have some code where we want to console log, actually remove this so that we don't get confused. And for some reason, I want to convert the password to uppercase, right? Well, in this case, the user actually doesn't have any password. So this is actually gonna throw an error during the runtime. But I believe by default, TypeScript is actually not, does not enable strict null checks. So obviously this is going to lead to a bug. So what instead you can do is go to your TS config JSON, which is which you're gonna definitely have if you're using TypeScript, and make sure yet yeah, that you have this uh, option, which is called strict null checks enabled. So either this one, or you can also instead have a strict mode. Strict mode is more stricter. It kind of enables more um, checks here instead of only the strict null check. But let's say for this example, we're gonna enable this one. And now when I save and go to the file, you're gonna see that we are getting an error. So what does the error says? User password is possibly undefined, which in our case it is, it doesn't exist, right? So what you can do to make sure that it's magically gonna be there at some point and it's not undefined. Well, of course you can, first of all, make sure that you put an exclamation mark and an exclamation mark literally means that, hey TypeScript, I am sure that this value is not going to be undefined right? And then you get no compilation errors. Another thing is that if we remove the exclamation mark, we can have an if statement, just a null check. So we can say user dot password is not, first of all, null, and user dot password is also not undefined. And now if we put this block inside here, all right, but this is obviously long, so the best way to overcome this problem, and I would believe the safest way is actually simply putting a question mark, which is going to make sure that if the password doesn't exist, it doesn't kind of fails silently, so it doesn't break your app. But if it exists, then I'm gonna convert it to uppercase. That's it. All right, so, and one bonus kind of best practice for me would actually be using a style guide. If you're just using TypeScript and you don't want to be bound to a specific framework, check out this Google's style guide for TypeScript. And it has many um, like uh, sections, very extensive, and you can just read through in a couple of hours. Or for example, if you're using React, also check out this Airbnb React JSX style guide. Anyway, I'm not gonna go deep into that. You get what I mean. So I'm gonna just put the links in the description, description, check them out if you'd like. And by the way, shameless plug, if you guys are interested in actually advanced topics for TypeScript, make sure you check out my advanced TypeScript playlist. I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn a lot of interesting things there. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.